Happy New Year! You've probably experienced New Year before. Or probably you have. But how is it in Japan? I will show you how in this video right now. First of all, Japan imported the Gregorian calendar in 1873, five years after the Meiji Restoration. This means New Year in Japan is on the same day as for example in America or Europe. The preparations for many people start earlier, however, when they start preparing their New Year's postcards to be delivered on January 1st. The Japan Post guarantees this delivery date even though this period is the busiest of the year for them. That's why they hire a lot of college students to help them out. Depending on how large your family is and how many friends you have, this can be a very big task. For example, I wrote 18 cards this year to our friends and family in Europe and my wife 15 to all the people in Japan. And if you are like me, not used to using this item anymore, then it will even become painful. Then on New Year's Eve, many Japanese eat soba noodles, toshikoshi soba. They do that because they are long and long should also be your life. And they are also easily bitten or broken, which symbolizes breaking off the old year. Temples will ring their bells 107 times on New Year's Eve and one time on New Year's Day. Then people will do their first prayer of the year, usually right after that or on January 1st, 2nd or 3rd. This is usually why shrines and temples are very crowded during this period of time. This is the queue to a shrine I wanted to go to with my family on January 1st last year. And this is Zenkoji, a temple that's very popular in Nagano city, also on January 1st, a couple of years earlier. On New Year's Eve, many people will watch TV, particularly Kohaku Utagasen, which is a music show. Of the artists represented, many will be from the producer Janis. And Janis is known for, let's put it this way, not having the most musical, but rather optically pleasing artists. Then on New Year's Day, people eat Osechi. Osechi comes in the form of bento boxes, like lunch boxes, and contains food which all has a specific meaning. For example, Dai Dai is a Japanese bitter orange. And written differently, Dai Dai also means from generation to generation and therefore symbolizes the wish for children in the new year. Another thing many people don't do so much anymore in the old year is making mochi. Mochi is a rice cake which is created by wettening rice and then pounding it with a wooden hammer. This is labor intensive and exhausting, so many people nowadays buy it in the supermarket or 7-Eleven or wherever. Usually this kind of mochi looks like this, with a large mochi at the bottom and then a smaller one on top. And on top again is a small dai dai, either original or made of plastic. The mochi is kept usually until January 11th, until which it will be a little brittle and easy to break, which will be done. Then it will be eaten. And this is called kagami biraki, opening the mirror. This kind of practice is often done in companies, martial arts dojos on the first day of practice and also sport events. When coming to Japan as a visitor you will probably not see this event, but you will see the mochi because many stores put them on some kind of altar and present them there until it is eaten. Another thing some or even many people will do is write down their new year's resolution. Here you can see me writing down mine. I do this with a brush, writing kanji, and this is something I only do once a year and accordingly my handwriting looks like that of a first grader. This is now my wife writing and here you can see how it's actually supposed to look. In case you're wondering what I've written down now, it says doga or short video. In other words, YouTube. Videos for your enjoyment. Overall, New Year's is a holiday. Most people will have the day off on January 1st and many people also on 2nd and 3rd. A lot of people will take off the whole week around New Year. This means if you want to buy groceries on January 1st, you might have a hard time doing that, but convenience stores are there for the rescue. Everything else is pretty slow as well, except of course temples and shrines. New Year's in Japan is family time. Therefore many people will flee the cities and go back to their hometowns. This means if you want to visit the countryside when in Japan and before New Year, you should make a reservation and accordingly if you come back soon after New Year, you should do it as well. Yesterday, for example, I went back from Nagano, where I spent my New Year's, to Tokyo and there was an announcement at the station saying that all JR Pass holders have to have a reservation because all the trains for the day had already been booked out. As I mentioned in the beginning, New Year's Eve in Japan does not include fireworks and often not even a party. Japanese are fantastic at making beautiful, beautiful fireworks and choreographies and doing that for a very long time, like two hours or longer. However, 
These choreographies are usually only on display on firework festivals and they are shown mostly in the summer months. I hope you liked this video, maybe even learned something new today. As usual I'm not trying to sell you anything, so if you would instead press the like button, this would be really appreciated. For now, thank you so much for watching and Happy New Year!